So today we're using a new ingredient, quite a strange one to be honest, but it's something that our supplier said is the common wastage in their operation. So it's actually the ears from a wild UK rabbit. This is basically just a little form of cartilage that is going in the bin and systematically wasted every day. Obviously not a huge amount of meat on it, but what we're hoping is if we can skin them, pressure cook them, dehydrate them, we can get some super, super crispy, like um, almost like pork scratchings, but um, in rabbit form and it's going in the bin, so why not use that? Basically all we start doing is just removing this outer membrane and basically just soften them in a little bit of water first. It can just help release the outer layer of skin and fur. Um, obviously you could do this a different way, um, but this we found is probably the quickest way of doing it. So it's just gently peeling away that whole sort of section of sinew away from the, uh, the raw ear underneath. So to finish the process, all we do is steam them at 100 degrees C in a rationale oven. Um, then once they've completely broken down and they're really soft, um, then we dehydrate them. So we've got our rabbit ears that have been pressure cooked, peeled, skinned. We've got our oil here absolutely raging hot. It's really important that the oil is above 200 degrees. So you've got to be super careful doing this at home. Um, basically, the process of um, pressure cooking them and dehydrating them locks moisture in. And then when you put it into boiling oil, they puff up like pork scratchings a little rabbity pork scratchings. And that's what we want, we want those little, little pockets of air to expand really quickly, make the whole thing puff. To be honest, this process of like dehydrating, frying, like can basically turn most inedible things into tasty, delicious snacks. So lots and lots of seasoning on there. That, my friend, is a rabbit pork scratching. It's gonna be beautiful on top of our terrine. This is a test for us as well, so we've never tried this before. So this is what's left from our rabbit ears experiment. So, I mean, it doesn't look the best. It looks a little bit like dried out potato skins, but um, I really like the idea of doing the rabbit ears because often when you skin the rabbit in the field, the ears often come off with a carcass. So. What we're doing here is we're reuniting the rabbit ears with the terrine. So this is our rabbit terrine, it's made out of the legs, the offal of the rabbit, got layers of Ardem prunes in there, uh, loads and loads of booze, so it's nice and boozy. A um, little bit of uh, a few different spices, loads of um, chopped up pork fat to give it a little bit of um, richness, a little bit of like moisture running through the terrine. So crispy ears, lovely rabbit terrine, Let's see what happens. A couple of purees on top of the terrain. Got a lovely horseradish cream. And some beetroot. Again, just adding a nice bit of earthiness to the dish. A little bit of sweetness from the beetroot gel. And we've got a few of these pickled onion the good onion is just going to add a really nice crunch and also a nice acidity. A few endive leaves. So we've got the lovely crispy rabbit ears here, which Will prepped earlier. Again, just like different levels of texture. Because even though you've got the crunch from the pickled onions, then you've then got like a, a crispy crunch from the rabbit ears and just a little bit of sorrel. Again, just brings it all together. And again, another little level of different type of acidity. Don't think his gamekeepers were too impressed when they, they were, we were asking for them to uh, cut the ears off. But well, they're very small ears, aren't they? They're not really like, they're like, not like anything you'd ever think of as a rabbit. They're a bit more like um, squirrel ears. Classically, in, uh, in Europe and Spain, a lot of the rabbit is all farmed. So it's a lot, lot bigger than this. These wild ones are a lot smaller. When you buy an animal whole, you end up with a lot of byproducts that you need to use. But a tree is a really good way of using it all up. But you can mince different parts in different ways. Here we can put the, the loins in, just diced up because they're a lot more tender. 
the more the tougher joints of meat, like the legs and the shoulders, you can mince those a little bit more so they're a bit finer, so they're a bit easier to break down. It's a satisfying thing to make, especially when it's kind of like a sustainable UK, British. Seth sides to make things like Rabbit's eels reunited with its meat. Mm. That's good.